and good morning. We're ready for section 9.2, um, parentheses, the distributive property and unknowns. So yesterday we talked about, in the last lesson, we talked about parentheses and then the brackets that you use. And when there's several of those, you always start with the inside and work your way out. Well, today we're not really going to talk about the parentheses and brackets. We're going to talk more about the distributive property. So this was the formula that we used in the last lesson to um, find Celsius when we knew Fahrenheit. But could we use this formula to find Fahrenheit if we knew Celsius? The answer is yes. So turn the page. But we're actually not going to do this just yet. We're going to kind of take a, it's not really a rabbit trail, but sort of a rabbit trail. So just hang on for the ride. So if you knew that it was 20 degrees Celsius, could we find the degrees Fahrenheit? Well, you know what C equals and you know what F equals. So you just plug in the numbers that you know. We know that C is 20 degrees, and we know this is the rest of the formula. So yes, you can find the value of F the same way that you would find any other unknown by getting it on the side by itself. But how do you do that? After all, you have to subtract 32 degrees from F, but we don't know F's value. So it's time to review the distributive property and look at how it, how it can help us. All right, so let's look at this property. The distributive property is a name to describe the fact that you that if you distribute multiplication among the add-ins and then add those results together, you'll get the same result as if you first did the addition and then multiplied sum. So here's a very simple example right here. Now, if we did addition first like we did yesterday, you would do what's in parentheses and then you would multiply. Okay, with, distribu with distribution, you would do this, 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. And then, of course, you know, you add those together, you get 14, you get the same answer. Okay, no matter whether you distribute or use multiplication and you add the add-ins, whatever you use, you're going to get the same answer because God's way is consistent and because that's how he's made, he made it and everything he holds, it, he holds in place. So, then how does the distributive property help us find the unknowns? Let's take a closer look. All right, we're going to use a percentage uh, problem first. Suppose your purchase totaled $50. You know you bought two items, one of which was $30 before tax. You don't remember the cost of the other item, but you know you were charged 6% tax on both items. How much was the other item? Well, let's write the problem out using X to stand for the item of which we want to find the price. Okay, so 1.06 uh, times $30 plus 1.06 times X. Where are they getting the 1.6? Okay, 1.06 times 30 plus X. See, they put these in parentheses because you're doing the same thing here. Multiplying by 1.06 is the same as finding 100% plus the 6% tax. As 100 plus 6% is 106% or 1.06. Okay, that's where they got that. In the equation on the left, which was the first one that we were talking about, you're just multiplying each item by the tax to find its total with tax, and then you would add them together to find the total. In the equation on the right, we're adding the items we purchased and then multiplying their total to find the total tax. So both equations are two different ways of thinking about the problem. So we'll take a closer look at this one right here, this problem. This was the second problem. These are the ones that we need to know. This is similar to the one with the Fahrenheit and the Celsius. So we're going to use the distributive property. So 1.06 times 30 plus 1.06 times x equals 50. Notice that now we're multiplying each of the items by 1.06. This is the same thing as, well, this. All right, the distributive property got us right back to where we started for the most part. Here we are. So then what we're going to do is simplify. You're going to take 
1.06 times 30, which gives you 3180, plus 1.06 times x, just gives you 1.06x, equals $50. Now you can solve by to find x by isolating it on one side. So 3180, we're just going to subtract that to, from both sides. So then we're left with 1.06x equals 1820, because you have to subtract that from this side. Then you would divide both sides, because you've got to do the opposite of what this is. This is multiplication. The opposite of that is division. So divide both sides by 1.06. These cancel out. You're left with x by itself. Once you do the calculations, you get 1717. Technically, you get $50.0002 when you use a value of 1717. In other words, if you plug this number back in and you check it, your answer would be 50.0002. But the difference is rounding. So because when you pay money, you don't we don't go, we don't do this. That's why they just rounded to $50. So distributing the multiplication enabled us to solve the problem we otherwise couldn't have. Now, we're going to take a look at applying this property when you've got subtraction inside the parentheses, such as a problem like this. 4 times 2 minus x equals 10. Let's take a look at this right up here at the top. The distributive property only works on add-ins that make up a sum. So add-ins, remember, they can go either way. It doesn't matter which way you put them. But in subtraction, that's not true. Remember, though, that you can view subtraction as an addition of a negative number. For example, this problem right here, you could view this as this right here. This is the addition. See, it's subtraction, but they're changing it to addition and taking this as a negative. Adding a negative is the same as subtraction. Okay, now you can use the distributive property to find it. So 4 times 2 is 8, plus 4 times negative x is negative 4x equals 10. Notice that we simplified 4 times negative x to just simply this. Remember, you can think of negative x as negative 1x. So you can think of 4 times negative x as 4 times negative 1x, which you simplify to this here. Add negative 8 to both sides so that we get rid of the 8 and we're left with negative 4x equals 2. Divide both sides by negative 4. When you do all the calculations, you get it down to negative 2 fourths, which simplifies to negative half. Now suppose that you know that you left the store having spent a total of $20. You purchased a $33 item and returned an item, but you can't remember the price of the returned item. You also know that you were charged 6% tax on the purchase and credited 6% on the return. So using X to stand for the returned item, we could represent this mathematically like this. The tax times $33 minus what you took back equals what you spent. Okay, so think of the parentheses like this. Okay, because we can't use distributive with subtraction, so you have to change it to where it is adding a negative. Okay, and then you can distribute. 1.06 times 33 plus 1.06 times negative x. You're left with this. Then simplify it. You get 34.98 plus negative 1.06 is $20. Add negative 34.98 to both sides so that you can get rid of this. And you're left with 1.06x equals negative 1498. Divide both sides by negative 1.06 so that you have x by itself. When you do the calculations, you get $14.13. Now again, if you substituted the 1413 into the original equation for x, you can verify that you have successfully found the value for x. Because $20 is $20. Now, we've rabbit trailed down something we needed to know in order to go back to our uh, formula for converting the, uh, the temperature. So our formula, our um, original equation was converting 20 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. So this is our formula. We know what Celsius is, so we just plug the number in. Now, 
Then it says, distribute the multiplication, being careful to view negative 32 as a negative number. Okay, remember you have to change this to plus the negative number, because that's what it is actually. And we do the distribu di 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 distributive <laughs> property, 5 ninths times F, gives you 5 ninths F, plus 5 ninths times negative 32, do the calculations, and it comes out to be this. So you're left with 20 degrees equals 5 ninths F plus your negative 160 degrees over 9. So add, you got to do the opposite, so add this to both sides so that these cancel each other out, and you're left with 340 over 9 equals 5 ninths F. Remember, we need to get F by itself. So you're going to divide both sides by 5 ninths, which means you actually multiply by the reciprocal. Remember this? So 5 ninths and then times the reciprocal gets rid of all that, so we're left with F by itself. And then once we do all the figuring and calculations, we're left with 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So 20 degrees Celsius equals 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, you can plug it in there into your equation, work it, and make sure that it's correct. Now, all those look hard. They look like they'll take forever to do, and sometimes they will. And they are complicated looking, but if you just take it step by step, it's really not that hard. Okay, so let's take a look at the worksheet and see what we're doing here today. Worksheet 9.2, it's front and back. Now, number one, A through D, it's just reviewing the order of operations. Um, it's got, you know, parentheses, it's all, you're just doing the order of operations, normal. Obviously, do what's in parentheses first. Remember, when you add fractions, they have to have common denominators. Don't forget that. Now, number two, you're going to review the distributive property. So you're going to take these problems up here, 1A through 1D, and you're going to use the distributive property. And it says to show your work on there. So I don't necessarily have to see it. I mean, if you get the right answer, generally, it's because you did the problem right. The reason that it wants you to show your work is so that if you get it wrong, I can see where you got it wrong. But it doesn't matter to me whether you show the work or not. It'd be great if you'd send it, if you use a piece of paper. You might use a whiteboard, and that's okay too. On number three, using the distributive property to find unknowns. Remember, now let's work this one. Let's work this one together right quick. All right, so... Uh, the distributive property, this will be 5 times x, which would be 5x plus 5 times 2, which would be 10, equals 30. Okay, then you want to get x by itself, so the next logical thing is going to be to subtract 10 from both sides. I do it a lot different than they do in the book. I just do it the way that my teacher showed me how to do it when I was a kid. Okay, these cancel out. So you're left with 5x on this side equals 30 minus 10 is 20. And I think you know what to do from there. To get x by itself, you'll have to do the opposite of this, which is, uh, which is dividing by 5. So then you're left with x equals 4. Okay, that's all you do. It's this to this and then this to this. Okay, and then you got to figure out the rest of it. Okay, let me erase that because it'll print out when I go to print it. Um, all right, we'll do that on those. On the back, there's uh, some more that you'll be using, the distributive property. Don't let the fractions, don't let those get you down. You know how to work fractions. You know how to add and subtract, multiply and divide fractions. So don't let that scare you. Just remember the rules about doing those. Um, number four, you're going to be using parentheses with word problems. Write the problems using parentheses and solve them. Some problems involve an unknown. Some of them do not. Okay. And then on number five, you have two to convert. Um, and it gives you the formula. Now, if you need help, especially on any of these, I'm not going to offer the help until I know if you need it or not, only if I think you might. 
But if you need help on any of these, make sure and send me a message and I'll be happy to help you, okay? And I'm not going to grade this page. That's all for today. Yeah!